Good evening, Fathers Heart Digital Church, the place where we're actively equipping the saints. Thank you for joining me tonight. My name is Daniel Van Sale, and I have the privilege of sharing with you tonight another part in our foundational, foundational doctrine. And tonight we have a specific subject where we talk about the four baptisms. And I know we've talked about baptism before. And I know a number of you have been baptized, the water baptism, in the, in the last uh, little while. And we're very excited and we're sharing it with you. But tonight we talk about the four baptisms. And um, tonight we will expand, expand on that. But uh, before we start with our topic for tonight, allow me to say thank you to Cape Town. We had an amazing, a fantastic visit in Cape Town on Friday evening. It was a privilege uh, meeting with all you Cape Townians and uh, you are a lacquer bunch. Thank you for coming out in your numbers to come and meet and greet us. And um, it was an, an absolute privilege. But um, tonight we talk about the four baptisms. Let's pray together, saints. Father, we just come and we commit this evening, this little time that we have with you as a family, as Father's Heart Digital Church, as the, the family. Lord, we just come and, and we commit this time to you and say, Lord, thank you that we have the privilege to just come and, and for a moment take a breather from a very busy day. And just come and sit and be quiet with you. Holy Spirit, please be the teacher tonight. Please be the one breaking open this, this topic. Be the one that come and have the last word on it. And, and Holy Spirit, be so gentle and kind as to pull the words that I use to be exactly what everyone needs, where they are. Exactly what they need is where they are at this moment. Lord, we thank you that we can know that we can trust and rely on you. Because you are the giver of all good things. We thank you for that. We look forward to learn about this topic tonight. We say thank you, Lord. Thank you that we have the privilege to have the freedom of discussing your gospel openly with anyone. It is such a privilege. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name. Amen. So, let's uh, grab the, the topic for tonight. And uh, we start with our um, founding scripture or the the foundational scripture for the four baptisms and um, we find it in Hebrews 6 verse 1 to 2 and we, we used this in previous um, topics already and uh, we are on topic 11 already can you believe that and remember saints that this is the topic that we will discuss on Wednesday evening in our home fellowship group so I really urge you and invite you to come and and uh, visit us in the home fellowship group and um, Come discuss with us um, this specific topic and um, on Wednesday. And, and this is where you can come and, and, and tell fellow believers how you see this topic and hear how every one of the fellow believers interpret this topic and their view on it. And thank you to everyone that's reacting in the comment box. Thank you to everyone telling us where they're from and everyone uh, sending us some love and, and some thumbs up and, and enjoying the evening. We really appreciate that. This is the feedback that we get. Remember, we used to stand in front of you and have a live audience and feed off the audience. And um, in this format, we feed off what we see from you and your interaction. So thank you for being with us on this call and visiting us on this call and um, actively participate by um, sharing your thoughts and your feelings in the chat box. Hebrews 6 verse 1 and 2. Therefore, leaving the discussion of the element, elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God. Remember, we used this same scripture when we talked about repentance from dead works. Verse 2, for the doctrine of baptisms, the doctrine of baptisms, of uh, laying on of hands, of resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. So tonight, this is the topic that we that we look at, and um, 
if we go look at the definition of baptism um, as we find it in the scriptures, it comes from the Greek word baptizo, and, uh, which means to totally submerge. submerge. Now remember, this is not like, um, like uh, just give you a little bit of water. This is totally submerging. And I know we are, we are South Africans on the school. We understand the rusk. And uh, when you eat the rusk, you don't put your finger in your, in your coffee and you just uh, sprinkle a little bit of coffee on the rusk. You, you baptizu that rusk. You put that rusk in the coffee. You totally submerge the rusk. And that is the meaning of the word baptism when we get to water baptism. So baptism means to submerge. But tonight we will look at the four different baptisms and... Um, the four different baptisms, if I can just list them quickly, is the baptism into the body of Christ, which happens at salvation. Water baptism, when you decide to be baptized after you came into salvation. Holy Spirit baptism, when you are baptized in the Holy Spirit. That means you receive the Holy Spirit in you, but you now activate the gift. You now open this gift of the Holy Spirit and the last one is the baptism of suffering. And um, I will leave that one until we get to the, to the topic to talk about that one. So if you look at the four um, baptisms and we start and we look at the first baptism, baptism into the holy, uh, baptism into the body of Christ. That means the day that I bend my knee and I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. The day where I, where I do the sinner's prayer. The day where, when I say, Lord, I lay down my life and I accept your complete work on the cross for my life. That is the day that I get baptism into the body of Christ. That is the day that I am uh, the recipient, that I receive the Holy Spirit. And the uh, Holy Spirit is an indwelling spirit in you. And the baptizer at that moment is the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is the Spirit that actually takes dwelling in you. The indwelling Christ. And the moment that I receive the Jesus Christ's full work on the cross as for me. That means I, get in, I come into salvation. I do the sinner's prayer. I commit my life to the Lord. The Holy Spirit actually is doing the work. And the Holy Spirit becomes the indwelling Christ. The indwelling Christ in you. The candidate, who's the candidate? So the, the baptizer is the Holy Spirit. The candidate is the repentant sinner. So I'm in the process of doing the sinner's prayer. I am committing my life to Jesus Christ. So I'm the candidate. I'm the one that's receiving um, baptism into the body of Christ. That means I become part of the body of Christ. I, I become a fellow believer. And the element is the body of Christ. So I am now becoming a member of the body of Christ, a fellow believer. And the scripture, the reference scripture that we have on that specific um, baptism, we find in Romans 6 and verse 3. Or do, um, or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into His death? So the day that I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, I come into salvation I accept the complete work on the cross as for me. The blood has flown for me. The body and, uh, the, uh, body and um, the blood of Christ for me. On that specific day, I get baptized into the body of Christ. And I, I actually receive the Holy Spirit as the indwelling Christ in me. Then we go to the baptism in water. And um, the baptism in water, who is the... A baptizer, a believer. Remember when we talked about baptism with water, we, we said you don't need to wait for a pastor or a, someone that sounds very holy with a position and a rank to baptize you. Any fellow believer, someone that accepted Jesus Christ's death on the cross for their, um, for their life, a fellow believer can baptize you. So go find a fellow believer, go find someone that can be the witness for you on the day, someone that you will have contact with regularly to remind you of that day. So the baptizer is a fellow believer. The candidate is the new believer, the person that recently became 
came into the, the body of Christ that um, uh, found salvation. And sometimes there's a lot of time between um, receiving salvation um, to uh, baptism. Because you have to wait for the Holy Spirit to talk to you. And for some people, it is like an instantaneous. Some people, you do the sinner's prayer with them, and the first thing they ask you after they come up for a breath is to say, I want to be baptized. Some people uh, do, the, do the sinner's prayer, receive the Holy Spirit as the indwelling Christ. But it takes them some time to get to the point where they say, I need to be baptized. I know for myself it was a little bit of time because I grew up in a church where I was baptized as a baby. And I thought that that was enough. And I had to get into the Word and I had to get in relationship with Jesus Christ to really understand the reason for it. And, and people could talk to me about it and could... could um, uh, give me teachings on it, but I had to find it in my spirit. I had to get the conviction in my spirit to be baptized um, in water. Then um, the element is water. You submerged. You um, totally submerged into water. That's how we, we baptize. So the element is water. And the scripture we find in Matthew 28 and verse 19. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And remember, when you baptize someone, you tell them, you, while they're still outside of the water, I, I, I ask them, do you confess that you have accepted Jesus Christ as um, died for your life? Yes, I accepted Jesus Christ's death on the cross for my, for my life. Then I tell them, I'm going to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then I baptize them I submerge them under water and I allow them to come up, to stand up um, into life again, born anew um, from water baptism. Then we go to the third baptism, baptism into the Holy Spirit. Now, for some people again, when you baptize them in water, baptism in the Holy Spirit happens at the same time. It's not often, but I have found that a few times in the time that I, well, in the years that I'm privileged to baptize people. I, I did find people um, that are baptized in the Holy Spirit while they're baptized in, in water. Um, so it can happen. I have seen it. I've experienced it. And I've walked the road with those um, fellow believers. And I could see that they're sincere. And it's not just something that they faked. It is something that really happened. But for a lot of people, baptism in water and baptism in the Holy Spirit takes a little bit of a journey. I know for myself, it took from July to September uh, to receive baptism in the Holy Spirit. So who's the baptizer when it is baptism in the Holy Spirit? Jesus himself. Jesus baptized you in the Holy Spirit. The candidate, the believer. So I am a believer. Baptism in the body of Christ, I'm a repent repentant sinner. Baptism in water, I'm the new believer that's now baptizing myself in water. I'm growing in, in believing um, in being a follower of Christ. Baptism in Holy Spirit is a believer, someone that already believes in um, Jesus Christ, someone that's already a, a fellow believer. The element is the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is the element in baptism in the Holy Spirit. And the scripture reference that we have there, we find in Acts, Acts 1 and verse 5. Um, and I'll read that for you. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. You shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. And remember, we, we understand the impact of baptism in the Holy Spirit. We understand the impact of the Holy Spirit when I do the sinner's prayer. I receive the Holy Spirit. The, the Holy Spirit becomes the indwelling Christ in me. But it is as if I receive the the present. Can you still remember my analogy when we've done that subject? It is as if I receive a present, a gift that is wrapped the day that I that I give my my life to the Lord, that I um, found, find salvation. On that day, I receive the gift, the Holy Spirit. I receive the gift. I have the gift. But some people take a little bit of time before they open the gift, before they start operating with the Holy Spirit, before they baptized with the Holy Spirit. And um, so um, that is the, the 
the chronological order for most people. But as I said, for some people these things happen one after the other, uh, one, one after the other in quick succession. And then the last one of the four is baptism into suffering. And um, this is one of those that sound not as glamorous and as cool. But um, if we understand this, we, can, we will see, you will see as we go through the points, you will see that a lot of you will identify with baptism in suffering. And it's different than what you think when I just say baptism in suffering. So allow us to just allow that term to simmer a little bit and look at the, look at the um, explanation for that. The baptizer is the world. Because baptism into suffering is the world. The world brings it on. We are living in this world, although we're not from this world. You remember that? We're living in this world, but we're not from this world. Because we accepted Jesus Christ. We're from the kingdom of God. But we still live in this world. So the world is the baptizer in this case. The candidate is the believer. And uh, the element is the suffering. The actual suffering that you suffer um, in the baptism in suffering and the ref referral or reference scripture we find in Mark 10 and verse 38 and 39 but Jesus said to them you do not know what you ask can you drink one cup that I drink and be baptized with the baptism that I am bap baptized with Jesus Christ asking them can you take a cup of the suffering that I had they said to him we are able we are always big mouths as, uh, as people. We are able. And um, that is some, the baptism of su into suffering is something that you have to think about twice. Because persecution will come once you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. So Jesus said to them, You will indeed drink the cup that I drink. And with the baptism I am baptized, with you will be baptized. So we will be baptized into suffering um, because Jesus Christ was baptized into suffering. So let's quickly unpack the four different baptisms and look at um, different scripture references to help you to be able to go to go understand these different um, baptisms and to be, be clear. The first one is baptism into the body of Christ. It's the process by which one becomes a Christian. Remember? It's doing, it's doing the sinner's prayer. Sometimes you have to take a step and go forward to do the sinner's prayer. Sometimes someone just tell you, pray with me, like what happened with me. God didn't give me any option. He didn't ask me. He didn't, want, he didn't give me time to think and mull about this. Do I want to do it? The person who led me to Jesus Christ just took me by the arm after what I said, pulled me to my knees and said, pray after me. And he led me in, um, to pray the sinner's prayer with him. And... Um, the scripture verse that we have there, um, it's the process by which one becomes a, a Christian. The scripture verse there is Galatians 3 verse 26 and 27. For you all are sons of God through faith in Jesus Christ. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. The next scripture verse is it is effective by the Holy Spirit. So the the Baptism into the body of Christ is affected by the Holy Spirit. And the scripture verse is 1 Corinthians 12 verse 13. For by one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. Then the last one in the baptism of, into the body of Christ is the direct, it's a directive of the Lord. It is a directive of the Lord and we read that in Acts 2 and in Acts 2 verse 47 praising God and having favor with all the people and the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved and you and I are adding to the church daily as we assist and help our fellow friends our fellow workers our fellow uh, our family into accepting Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior then the next um, one is the next uh, baptism that we want to unpack is the baptism into water. It is a commandment. So the first part of baptism into water, it is a commandment. And we read that part in Matthew and Matthew 28 verse 19. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father 
and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So it is a commandment. You and I have to do it. It is something that we have to com commit of. It is something that we have to do. And um, some, of, some of us are missionary type people in our um, spiritual walk. And um, for us it's easier to do that one, to go and talk to people. For others it's not that, it's not that easy. It is something that they have to work towards to achieve. Then uh, the next one is, it is symbolic of dying with Christ and rising anew. Romans 6 verse 3 to 4. Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death? So when I'm baptized, when I go into the water, it is as if I'm going, I'm, I'm dying to self. And I'm getting out of the water alive for Christ. Therefore, we were buried with, buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of God, even so, we also should walk in newness of life. Then the last one in baptism into water is, it clears our conscience from our past. And that's a key one from baptism in water. It clears our conscience. And I always, when I have the privilege of baptizing someone, is to tell the family and friends that's standing next to them, Remember, this sign of being baptized cuts off yesterday. That was then. This is now. We don't talk about yesterday again. Please stop reminding him of who he was and what he is. Stop, forget those old stories of who you were. Because you laid that down. You now washed it off. You died from that. You rise anew. 1 Peter 3 verse 21. There's there's also an antitype which now saves us, baptism, not the removal of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience towards God through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And um, it's imperative that we just understand and grab onto that one because it is one of those that will help you to grow quicker. Then baptism in the Holy Spirit, um, baptism in the Holy Spirit, um, it brings us into a personal relationship with a person of the Holy Spirit. John 14, 16. Now read that for us. And I will pray the Father and He will give you another helper that He may abide with you forever. Jesus Christ talking and He says, it's, it's to your benefit that I go away because my Father will give you another helper, the Alos Parakletos, the Holy Spirit, one of the same sort, the indwelling Christ, but the indwelling Christ that, in, that envelops you, that is over and um, part of you um, it gives us the power to be witnesses Acts 1 verse 8 but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth so baptism in the Holy Spirit will give us the power the boldness to step in will give us the boldness to pray for someone even if we think that oh, that's too big because we will realize when we baptize in the Holy Spirit, that's not about me. It's not me who's the, who's the person praying. It is God who's the healer. God who's the provider. God who's the one that can change the situation. Then the last one there is, it helps us with our prayer life. 1 Corinthians 14, 14. For, for if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. And how many times do I find that praying in tongues help me and assist me to just reset my mind, to reset my thinking in a stressful day when I'm busy and I'm running and I'm, I get on my, on my bike, I'm a, I'm a biker and I, drive, I ride to another appointment or I get in the car and I drive somewhere and I just pray in my tongue. I just pray in my tongue and um, it just realigns my spirit and it, it gives me a new fresh look into life into this into the situations around me and that helps me quite a lot but now we want to go into baptism into suffering i would like to just spend a little bit of time in baptism into suffering so that people will understand it because the moment that i accept jesus christ as my lord and savior i have to count the cost because there is a cost to it and that is called the baptism in suffering there is a cost to pay when you want to be a believer and want to stand out as a believer and want to give Christ to someone. Especially if you want to have unconditional positive regard for people. Why? Because people will take offense all the time. Because that's what you stand for. 
They will take offense on that area all the time. Remember, you cannot give offense. People take offense. And people will take offense. It's imperative for you not to, to harness it and to, and to grab hold of it and sit and spend time on it. So baptism into suffering, it brings persecution. Uh, 2 Timothy 3 verse 12. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. People will persecute you if you want to live a, a life of godliness. A life of godliness in Christ Jesus. People will persecute you. It is part of the cost that you have to count. Um, it brings false words. Matthew 5, 11. Blessed are you when you revile and persecute, when, when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Because people will, will stand up in alliance against you because you live a, you live a godly life for Jesus Christ. Um, it brings bodily suffering and death. Matthew 24, 9. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake and that's the fight in the world the fight against christians that is the fight that we see all around us it is not sickness it is not capital not sickness james 5 13 to 15 is anyone among if is anyone among you suffering let him pray is anyone cheerful let him sing psalms is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sin, you will be forgiven. Remember, this baptism into suffering is not illness tormenting you. The last one is it's not from our own careless sin. It's not because we have careless sin. 1 Peter 5 15 and 16. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or as a busybody in other people's matters. Did you hear that? As a busybody in other people's matters. Yet, if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. And um, on that note, it is my privilege to say to you, thank you for visiting me tonight on this topic. The, the topic of the four baptisms. And thank you for, for going to read all those different scriptures again and again so that you can understand it. Lord, we just come and we want to, to pray to everyone under the sound of my voice and say, Lord, help us that we understand and position the four baptisms so that we clearly understand it, so that we can talk freely to one another. Lord, allow us in the, in the days ahead until Wednesday when we're going to talk about this in the small fellowship groups, that we will align our thinking about this so that we understand it, so that we, we freely and that we have the boldness to talk about it, so that we can understand it and put it to bed, so that we can grow and go the next level. And Lord, for those who still have to do one or two or three of these steps, Lord, we pray for them, for your godly wisdom. We pray for the Holy Spirit. To just be who the Holy Spirit is, kind and um, kind-hearted and willing to help and assist and um, just holding them, Lord. Lord, we pray that you will just hold everyone tonight. Just, just hack them. Just give them your peace so that they know that they know that you are in control. Thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. It was an absolute privilege visiting with you. Have a great evening. Cheers.